I don't stick to no plan. Yeah, I don't stick to no woman. Ah. Not for me. Not for you. I thought you were going to come in. You normally no. come into those hot, spicy licks. I do come in, but that, that lick wasn't hot and spicy enough. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Give me another one. Mm -mm. Riding down the city, looking at my friends, thinking, oh my God, I've got the best I've friends. I've got my car roof down and I'm feeling kind of high. I've got but my friends. Sorry. You've got you to let me finish the rhyme. <laughs> so, so Just start the show. <laughs> um, welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, it, I'm feeling strange at this point. It feel I feel um, kind of like uh, you know the mosquito in Jurassic Park when he uh, it covered in the kind yeah. of amber. That's how I feel. You feel like the like, amber covered mosquito in Jurassic Park because I'm sort of um, <laughs> suspended in a thick, viscous um, gloop, gloop um, where it's kind of like the the the, the sort of more existential anxiety to starting to like it's like me 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 like Morse code. They're starting to cut. There's like a yeah. feeling in the back that's starting to like a come small in tap there. of a, a tiny sickle on the yeah. back of your neck, me, 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 just me, below me, the me, just below me, the head me. and above the spine. Yeah. So there's just yeah there's 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 something is, there's something creeping in. Is that why you're wearing brain. a thing big work smart t-shirt? Well, actually, that was Jump more just repping because this is I've I've finally done my announcement that I've got this. Yeah. fantastic piece of merch so it would be a show not to wear it for those of you who don't know i'm not going to tell you what this means but those of you who know you're the real ones um but welcome to the show andrew Cohen. thank you uh, how have you been i've been all right i've been not bad you know after a meltdown last week we've been we've had a steady build up uh to, uh, Starting to um, switch around maybe a, start a, little of a, bit. a modicum of reality mm -hmm. um but i think i feel the same uh i feel the sickle in the back me, of my me, head too me, me, yeah, me, it's me, that me. yeah Okay. And I think maybe that's a product of actually a sight at the end of lockdown because we've become so inhabited in this world of lockdown mm. and have become so good at being used to this life that now we're contemplating the end of it. We're starting to think existentially. Yeah, because now you have to like, I'm desperate for it to end, but there's also the, there's anxiety. But of, then what if it's mean out there? What if they're mean out What there? if everyone's really yeah. mean? Because it's been a, it's been like a shite y a year and a year, but it could be worse out there. It could be worse out there, but also think of all the wildlife. You remember the early stories of the wildlife coming in? Yeah, but you, you there like, could be monkeys. But in if London. you have like shite years and it's not COVID, it's yeah. sort of on you. Yeah. But because it's everyone, yeah. it feels like a lot of responsibility has been taken on. It's been resolved. So if we have a shite year out of COVID, there's that's no all on it's us all again. On, it's on us. And there's going to be people having great years, like yeah. truly great years. Truly big ones. So that, I, I think that's where they're... I think we're grappling. Me, 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 me. I think we're all grappling yeah. with, actually. And as a lot of my information nowadays comes from, I was watching uh, this morning with Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby this morning. Um, well, sorry, this this does come back as well. You us bringing back this is sort of a reoccurring segment is the, the Bradley the the yeah. daytime TV, and it does feel there's something that has this feeling that we're sort of like it feels like there's like a we're, we're like a small base on Antarctica, the last humans left, yeah. and we're like on the radio show to try and create yeah. some feeling of normalcy. Well, there's nothing new when yeah. we're really working with the same concept. And there's like maybe like 50 humans left, but yeah. we, we, we on a radio show just so they can like put it on while yeah. they're, they're keeping the camp going just to try and create... While they're mining the yeah. ice. And because there was, a, there was a nice comment um, with someone saying that they listened to this while playing some sort of game and that touched me because that's how you should listen to podcasts. That's how I listen to podcasts. Why you, and you need to be doing something. Um, and I, I think that's kind of what this is and that's what our role in this is is that we just speak, background noise we're just back that's all i want oh, genuinely that's all i want to be i want to be put on the background while people cope i'd prefer if you'd get it up on the big screen and just focus on me for like an hour you don't need to look at you you could be background whenever you speak you can go and do your other activities but when i'm speaking i'd prefer yeah nay demand your full attention do you know you can do like bookmarks on uh like chapters on youtube videos now you yeah know? well maybe we could do it for we could when do one Horatio and speak speaking and, yeah. speak and, and when we talk over each other we just presume <laughs> i'm speaking to make sure at least no, it, it goes to an error code the screen and yeah. there's a bleep static yeah. <laughs> yeah. technical difficulties please come back later um but anyway you were saying but on something. this morning um they've had there's off uh, before the lockdown easing announcement yeah. Um, there was uh, obviously jubilation initially, um, sure. and there's people calling in. 
talking about what they're going to do after lockdown, where they're going to travel, and they're, they're talking about where. where? Well, I'm interested. I'm I think genuinely. Judith from Cardiff is looking to go to the Maldives. Okay. Um, oh, that's, that's quite. That's quite. She'd had some problems with her son's wedding um, and a bit of a fallout there, but um, the agony aunt on this morning really set her in the right place. Mm. Um, but. There was all this uh, all this talk about where people are going to go. So you had Martin Lewis on, who is a money-saving expert, as we all know. But does um, he have a regular... He yeah, a regular he's, yeah he's a fairly famous guy. Um, but he, they, they had him on, like, how, how are we going to get you to these great locations? What would be all this excitement about post-lockdown? Mm. The day after the lockdown announcement of the easing of it was made, it was anxious about the end of lockdown, and people were calling in about that. Ah. So it's like, again, it talks about the thing that we often talk about. If you have too high expectations for something, as soon as you get it, you fall down the cracks. It's true, yeah. And it's also like a lot of um, socially anxious introverts have sort of thrived during lockdown a little bit. Yeah. Because there's no f- pressure. Yeah. They can live You there. don't feel bad. About... I guess, but it's a, it's a two... It's a double-headed thing because you don't Double-headed? Feel... Double-headed. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's got like a two-headed monster. Sure. Because it's yeah. like a, a double-sided... A, a double-sided... It's a two-sided... Um, it's a double-ed- double-edged, double-edged sword. double-edged sword, yeah. But double-headed... Yeah, I mean, it's like a two-headed monster. Yeah, it's, that's what I meant. Okay, yeah, yeah like a like a, a minotaur, <laughs> but with two heads. <laughs> coming coming towards you. I think everyone else knew what I meant. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I was just clearing out. Um, it could be a two-edged sword, double-edged sword. Um, <laughs> with that, because you're often part of it is that yeah, great, you can you're not you don't feel the pressure if let's say you've got an anxious disposition and you don't want to go out and socialize whatever you're no longer you're no longer feeling left out by not being able to do those sure. things because of that but then also it's going to feed more into your feelings of that in this situation because you don't ever have the chance to yeah and i think just it's more that being closed off in our spaces is also going to be a lot worse for that so it's just a clusterfuck yes as in every way you look at it every every head you look i at. guess the only hope I guess I've been watching the Adam Curtis document. I'd finally finished it. Um, and it's a, it was a strangely hopeful version uh, of his normally incredibly bleak. There was like a bit of an uptick, which is kind of like the final sort of message was, you know, if we made this well, we can change it. And there was at least a little bit. Yeah. That maybe there's the, the only thing I'm really holding on to is maybe, you know, most great things have happened after a catastrophe. So maybe. You know, when Bambi goes on the ice yeah. and she's initially, she or he, is Bambi a girl? Sounds like a girl. Don't see gender, but go on, yeah. Oh, uh, I apologise, I didn't realise. <laughs> it's okay. Um, she goes again. on the ice. Yeah. They go on the ice initially. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's not a good sight, okay? Yeah. Look, because her hooves aren't great to do it. Yeah. Does she get better when she's on the ice? Yeah. I don't know enough about Bambi to make the point I'm trying to make. What was the point you're trying to the make? The point... Well, you we'll make, be, up we'll Bambi, we'll like make up what Bambi... Make up what Okay, for the, purpose of, for the purpose of this point, Bambi goes on the ice, she's really bad at it, and then eventually it gets good to start ice skating around. Yeah. We're a bit like Bambi sure. uh, coming out of lockdown. We're going to yeah. be on the ice, we're going to be skating yeah. around, we're going to be falling yeah. down, you know? We're going to be anxious. It's yeah. like we're first seeing the sun yeah. in, t- uh, in a year. Yeah. But then we'll get to grips with it, and then we'll start being like Bambi and skating gracefully around the ice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the one thing I would disagree with that is because that's more implying that we once knew how to skate on the ice. No, Bambi never knew how to skate. Oh, she never did. No. Well, so, a... But I mean, it, pre because that's more like readapting society. But I guess with, in my really optimistic long-term vision, I kind of need to motivate myself. I need to think, we got to at least have a plan to make the best future possible. Yeah. And have to see this as like this awful four or five years seeing as like, this is when a lot of the old shit became unfeasible and we can make yeah. a better place that has to be yeah i i would agree that, that has to be like we have to all believe that Are you talking politically though just every socially every i just think right there's so much shit that's gone wrong in the world it's yeah. like this is at least or may, hopefully people can look back on covid it's like being like that was actually a great thing because it meant that this happened this happened this happened and it's you know, like you've had a year to stop making that's what she said jokes yeah <laughs> yeah okay. you've had a year to reflect on how you are as a person <laughs> yeah. don't come out and make the same mistakes that you previously made. yeah so for those those people in the office that that's what she, she said guys the guys who like it, it was funny for two weeks then yeah. they did it ironically and they're self-aware about how unfunny yeah, yeah. the joke is but they do it so much that it's it's like a real problem yeah and then I, it's interesting because we US know office like you're talking about yeah uh just that yeah but those but sort people of people, who, but yeah, because but they're, they're, the US but office see, is laughing at Steve Carell's character doing it, but then people then use but it. But real, but yeah. yeah, and but then there's people who can you can see they're self-aware 
that they're being ironic, but they say it and they hate themselves when they're saying it, but they yeah. can't stop saying it like a twitch. Yeah. I wonder for those people who've been taken out of their environment, yeah. that that's what she said, guys. What are they, is there, I, think I the imagine first them standing month, by the, the window. The, the first like, month of lockdown was them just walking into a wall repetitively sure. saying that's what she said, that's, that's what, what she said, said. Because they didn't know what to do. And then themselves. the second month is looking out the window like, Maybe that isn't what she said. <laughs> yes. I'm really contemplating that. Yeah. And then they'll now they've gone through the classic, what is it, like the, the few steps of yeah. grief. Mm. The few steps of grief. <laughs> 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 the several steps of grief, whatever. A couple of steps of grief. And now they're at Bish the end of bosh, they're you, acceptance you're right. that that yeah. isn't what she said. Yeah. And they will now come out into, have you got anything off the top of your head of what people should come out of lockdown not doing anymore? People, things, habits that people should kick um, socially. I think systemic racism should go. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's weirdly the roles are reversed there. Yeah. <laughs> For me, that was get, I, I thought it was funny to begin with, but it's just boring now, so. Now you mentioned a climate change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should probably get that under control. I think bankers have too much uh, political power and power in general. Yeah, I've heard, had a long thing about banking bonuses. <laughs> And something about my reflection has decided that they're not yeah, on. Yeah. And maybe we should actually uh, nip that one in the bud. So those are kind of the big ones that I'm sort of thinking about. But anyway, you were saying about daytime TV before I derailed it. I think I, I did it. It was the, the... You were saying something about Bradley? No, I haven't said I could do my Bradley thing. Yeah, now. yeah. Right, so Bradley, just a Bradley Walsh update. Um, I'm aware uh, maybe 15% of you are interested in this, um, but I've passed the point of caring, really. But sure. Bradley Walsh, um, uh, basically, this is a congratulations, guys. We did it. Um, <laughs> message to everyone out there um i'm this, a small this, faction of our listeners. a small faction of our supporting your which is a small fight. very small faction of the world <laughs> yeah. um but we managed to do it somehow um and I'm, i've never claimed to be the leader of this yeah. um fight we're, it's always been a kind of devolved power situation sure. um like an narco we're, system. yeah we're, yeah. we're we're one with the people again we're the people against bradley walsh um, <laughs> the people versus bradley um walsh. so bradley walsh has uh, within the last few days started to gain a lot of negative press um in some big me media outlets mm. um, most of it is focusing on his annoying um, habit of constantly saying gotta be gotta be when he asks a question um, which is what I was talking you, about you pulled that up the that, implication did you, did you not get involved in any online discourse Look, before did what, you, was that an original thought my online discourse has been here and I have given <laughs> the world an idea that they've then planted as a beautiful seed that's yeah. turned into a gorgeous tree yeah, yeah. Um, what has then been rumoured is that um, there is a spin off of the chase and Philip Schofield is tipped to be the new host not Bradley Walsh so what we have done is we've created a sustained defamation of his character sure. um, through justified means mm -hmm. and uh, things that are true, mm. as in what we have struck a chord with the public. Mm. What we needed is one whistleblower to stand up and say, yeah. this is what he's doing. Yeah. And he goes from national hero to national disgrace. And at the moment, he is a national disgrace. And Long ITV have finally seen that. And Good. they've, so well done, well done to all of us. That's great. And um, you know what, proud. that sort of links into the point that I was making earlier, which is about what is the new world we want to make? Yes. You know, and that is such a positive step. You know, so it. maybe, you know, because it's that we knew everything was wrong, but there was not, there was nothing big enough to change things. But yeah. this meant that we have a chance to start afresh. Absolutely. And I think it's the buck stops at Bradley. Yeah. And he's the first to go. If we can deinstitutionalize a national hero as yeah. it was seeming to be yeah. as Bradley Walsh yeah. we can absolutely do anything yeah, we, can do anything. we can do anything I think it'll give what, not only will it be, um, improve a lot of people's lives but yeah. I think it'll also give people what, one of the most important things I think emotion psycholog psychologically for the British public is a confidence boost we've yeah. been hit yeah. and I think once we take Bradley down it'll yeah. fill us with confidence the rest and just we'll comes move, naturally you know Paul Sinner I think he's got to go from the show as the well cinema. Yeah, the cinema he is um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the cinema. He's next. We're starting with the chase. Unexplainably, <laughs> the cinema has managed to get a career of stand-up comedy off the back of the chase. Yeah. I don't. I've never Is that heard off the back of the chase. I doubt. I think he was. A stand -up I think he part. did stand up and then was. Yeah. He was a good candidate for the chase because yeah. he had a comedy bone. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't. Yeah. Um. And it appalls me. I think. Well, I'm not gonna. You know, there's too many issues with going for the cinema. Um. And I think we can't bite off more than we can chew. Sure, so we'll stick with Bradley. So I'm saying to all of you, stand down. Sure, We've stand done down. our job. We've done our job. <laughs> Let the There'll be someone alone. else. There'll be another fight. Give it a couple yeah. of weeks and we'll get there. Um, but this is a very exciting um, new thing we're doing, which I'm, I'm hoping to do. I only sent out an Instagram story like a couple, four hours ago. 
uh, so it wasn't much time, but we got a lot of questions in, a fair amount. Uh, I think it's something we might do semi-regularly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where I like, I like voice note questions. Yeah. I can just put it's in. It's fun to hear. It's fun to hear everyone's voices yeah. as well. So um, let's start to, with to kick us off. Um, uh, we've got some questions from our lovely fans. Okay, let's kick us so off. So all I said was any questions you want to send us a, a voice note. Um, and feel free to send send us any whenever, yeah. not just when a story's put up. If you think of anything killer throughout the week, jump on in. Uh, so the first question's from um, a person called Old Man Kim. Uh, Would you do fire that you're more cat people or dog people? Well, it's interesting you ask that, Kim. Um, I I have been, for the, for the majority of my life, I've been a dog person. Yeah. Um, I Actually, I was... Um, I was, <laughs> I was, um, it was my, the, I got a dog when I was about 12 years old, uh, soon after my parents divorced, yeah. they kind of linked, I was yeah. started to allow more things I wasn't allowed, yeah. um, but the only reason I got a dog is because my auntie babysat hmm. us, and we were talking about dogs, and I started crying about how much I wanted one. And I told her that every single birthday wish I could ever remember was to have a dog. Yeah. And it made her cry. And then she told she my cried. dad. She cried. Yeah, that's a, it's a really sweet thing. You haven't got a, you <laughs> haven't got a, that was that's a, a little bit fucking lame, isn't I it? I think it's sweet. <laughs> she burst to tears. Yeah. Okay. Well, not, maybe that was just me. She's maybe a grown was, woman. You know, she, maybe I, <laughs> sorry. So I was that jazzing up that the story the a bit. She didn't point. fucking cry. <laughs> she didn't cry. She just told my dad and then we got a dog. End yeah. of story. Um, um, but <laughs> no, I want to give old man Kim his time, <laughs> but I have now had, I, I was given cats before, Yeah. um, before I was allowed a dog to kind of appease yeah. me, like, much like the British did with Hitler. Um, and why, why appease Hitler? Yeah. Appease, appease when, when did he, appe when did they appease Hitler? When they gave him Poland. They didn't give him Poland. Did yeah. They? No, no, no. It was a whole, uh, there was a policy of appeasement to like allow him to have a bit oh, more expansion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the um, yeah, the the living space, yeah. Liebingsram. Liebingsram. Well, that, yeah, yeah. Liebingsram. But yeah. they appeased him rather than stopped him early, yeah. um, much like my cat. Um, yes, and then yeah. got a cat and fallen on my cat. So thank you, old man Kim. Um, yeah. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm a I'm a dog person. I think old man Kim was only asking me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right, should we move on to another question? I'm old man Kim. Um, <laughs> I mean, it looks like we've got no questions if the next, no, the yeah. rest of the questions. Well, that was the first is, question. Just that, us in the, that was the first oh! question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was the first question that came in. Okay, this right, question let's get to the is from Thomas Prentice, or uh, uh, he's listener of the show. Uh, okay. Hello, boys. Um, I've got a dilemma. My parents want me to do four A levels, where I just want to do three. Should I tell them to fuck off? Depends what the A levels are. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's Maths, physics, astrology, astronomy, mm -hmm. and <laughs> you got four. No, do what you want, mate. I actually no, scrap all that. Do what you want. If you feel like the work, uh, this isn't going to be funny. If you feel like the workload is going to be manageable to do three, uh, if, is, if you feel like the workload is going to be unmanageable to do four, then no, don't no, do what, no, here, no. I think this is. I, I think the point that we, 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 I think it's important is reflecting on what, where your headspace was when you were starting A-levels and what you view in it now. What I, what I did was three real levels and PE. Yeah. And then I dropped, but that was at AS. Yeah. So then I dropped PE for AS, but yeah. they don't have ASs anymore. Yeah. Well, all, all I'll say about um, A-levels is what we said before is they are, they're the, I, we both agree. Worst time. They're the worst time academically, but you they also, slog, whatever. and they're also the most important. So yeah. it is a big decision and it's not to, GCSEs, not that crazy important if you're trying to get into uni. A-levels shape you more than anything. A first and a two one, there's such a huge variation. It's more life, the way you get shaped as a person, it's more important what I, uni you get into. Exactly, but, but I think A-levels shape your life is, most. Because we had ASs, so then we'd yeah. always, almost, the classic thing was to do four yeah. ASs, drop one and then do three A-levels. Yeah. Now, I think an absolutely fair thing to do in that system is just do three because at the end of the day, the unis only look at the three grades that you're going to have from those three A levels. It was, remember, all offers were pretty much AAA or whatever. Yeah, I guess so. It wasn't four. You don't, like, people that were doing 
for A levels, yeah. it became unnecessary. Well, I, I don't know how yeah. the new system works because people that were doing four A A twos in our so yeah. in our life yeah. was completely unnecessary because to get into Oxford you need an A star AA it's true um, yeah it, it, obviously it's changed a, sl a slight bit since we were doing A levels but uh, all uh, my advice would be is that n a lot of them I don't think are that important A levels are super important so just try your best to get the uni you want because that's gonna if you're going to uni yeah. that's gonna shape you more than any sort yeah, of yeah, academic thing so whatever you think is gonna help you get into that uni do yeah. if you um, liaise with your school and they, they think the first yeah. choice uni you have if you're one, seeing four if you look at, have a look at unis basically yeah. if you're seeing uh, three A levels expected from yeah. different grades yeah. just do three yeah cause, and if you feel and the way that you say tell them the fuck off it sounds like you're um, leaning towards three because you don't want the world like, that's completely fair enough but all I would do is focus on um, the couple of choices you'll be happy with uni wise and that's all that you really need is to yeah. get into that the grades don't matter that much no one's going to look at your grades but the one thing that really does matter is getting into the place you want because yeah. that does matter and if you don't you can blame us and you can come be your sound Complete, man. completely sure um, right thank you very much Tom Prentice uh, this one is from a uh, long-time listener, first-time questionnaire, Young Limbs. Um. Hello, boys. Please let me know your thoughts and feelings on yoghurt. My son <laughs> keeps asking. Every time we listen to the podcast, he asks, what do they think about yoghurt? And I say... How do you think I would know that? How do you think I would fucking know that? <laughs> it's a great it's question. It's a great from young question. Limbs. It's a great question, and not just from young limbs, but from his son. Yeah, so from younger young from limbs. From young young <laughs> limbs. The youngest limbs. Um, yogurt. Um, now, uh, addressing youngest limbs directly, um, yeah. yogurt is a concept I've struggled with for a long time. Yeah. Um, like back in the day, you know the Cadbury's corn. No, not corners, but the Middle Cadbury's corner. flake. Okay, yeah, yeah. flake oh, or yeah. butter. You were a little slut for those. Yeah, I'm a, I was a chocolatey boy. Yeah, you really were. And I've really paid for it in the hips. <laughs> um, but I was mad into those yogurts. Yeah. Um, now yogurts might. Would you? I guess you would define that as a yogurt. Yeah, we're happy with that as a yogurt. Uh, yes, technically, but no, for what I think yogurts are for. Yeah, it's a pudding. Which I it's agree a pudding. Because you it's know how pudding. Americans say pudding. I wouldn't say yeah. I'd say, Mum, mm, can I have pudding. can I have a pudding? That's tonight. what yeah. it is. It's chocolate pudding. Yogurt. Yogurt. <laughs> yogurt. Mum, give me a yogurt. Yogurt is because yeah. it's yogurt in America, but yogurt is one of the most saying that in a British accent just for some reason sums up. Britain and I don't really know why but say it's like, one of those kind of a yogurt it's one of those words that people <laughs> say they hate yeah. and this is when people say like oh I can't hear the word squelch yeah or like what's yeah, the yeah. what's the um yeah. moist yeah grow the fuck up this feels like it's more of a gripe yeah but I Focus no, on but the no, question. no grow the fuck up I'm allowed to say moist or squelch or yogurt if I want to sure and any problem that you've got from that is something to do with your own Agreed. psychological issues back to the question back to the hand. yogurt I am not a I'm a big dairy guy like I love my cheese um, don't like milk that much um, if it's chocolate uh, we, yeah. we're getting a theme here yeah. if it's chocolate milk I'll <laughs> guzzle that down yeah um, like it is chocolate milk. Sure. Um, but I'm not a regular eater of yogurts. Maybe for my sins. Maybe I should change that. Mm. I mean, God damn, it's packed with calcium. Mm. You can't tell me it's not packed with calcium. Yeah. That vitamin B12, baby. Yeah. Um, but for me, I'd say yogurts out of 10, seven. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm coming round to yogurts and I think it's because I'm maturing as a man and I'm getting more sort of spiritual. Is that a comment developed. towards me? You're saying I'm not it mature was, enough it was to have actually. a yogurt. I'm glad you picked that up. Um, no, I don't want to have another so argument. I'm glad you said that you picked that up so I don't have to try and reaffirm yeah, the age yeah. of the podcast. Yeah. I can trust that you picked up on that jab. Uh, show man, Andrew Child. <laughs> Good. Good. You got that. Tick, tick. Yeah. Uh, I've been getting into yogurts a lot. I, in uh, my diet, I think yogurts are quite important. I um, have a pro issue of, I really need vitamins. So I, I, eat, I mainly eat fruit. I don't eat that much vegetables and I feel yogurt is great for digestion and stuff. Right, do you lick the lid of a yogurt? No. You're a fucking nonce. Because, right, we've had... we've Depends what yogurt, because if it's um one of those mixed yogurts where like the actual yogurt's quite bitter, then I won't. If it's like a, a pudding, then of course I'll lick the lid. Oh, so you mean it's a bit sour? Because what I'm doing... It's sour, what not I'm bitter. doing... Yes, yeah, sour. What I'm, I'm, I'm eating those kind of ones with like... <laughs> Are you passion Greek fruit, uh, Yeah, Greek yogurt. Oh. I like it. I'm, I'm coming around to it. I'll it's, never be that guy. It's but because I'm civilised. Yeah. It's because well, you're it's a Philistine. Greek, it's Greek civilization. It is. It's the foundation yeah, it's the of yogurt. Western civilization. It's yeah. the cradle 
of yeah. civilization is what I describe. Well, it's yogurt. like it's like, it, it it feels or looks like a pool of uh, d- divinity, sure. whereas a chocolate pudding looks like a pool of mud. It, no, <laughs> a pool of mud, more a pool of sin, to be honest. Yeah, going more on pooey the, muddy sin. Yeah, so yeah. I'm eating Greek yogurt because I'm divine, because I'm you know higher than. Uh, I'm eating the Cadbury like corners because mu- <laughs> you're you're a sinful. Because I'm a pig in the mud. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel we d- we did that. Yeah, I feel we did. I'd I'd also like to know how young is your son. Um, because I'd, if they're like right, because the the if they're seven years old or something, that's a fair question to always be asking. What do they think of yogurt? Yeah. But also, if they're any right, if they're anything older than that, yeah, there's some problems there. Sure. I mean, if he's if he's seventeen and he's asking to, what, hey dad, what do you think they think of yogurt? Yeah. Um, I don't think he then, has a son. He said son. I don't know because the way I look at him and I don't see, I don't. He might not have a son. He seems to. But then my point then was, but then if they're seven, it's a fair question to ask, but why are they listening to the podcast? Yeah, it's true. So I, I wonder if it was more of a joke question, that element. We don't know. But one thing we do know about Young Limbs. Um, if it is, it's a great joke. Because Young Limbs has uh, uh, sent us a question. He's been a long time listener um, and he's messaged a couple of times. Uh, and then I checked his profile out. And normally <laughs> it's like Darth Vader's butthole 699. You check it out and it's private with 12 followers. I'm yeah. like, okay, those are the sort of with no profile pic. And I'm uh, like, okay, yeah. those are the kind of things. And then him, Young Limbs, it sounded like one of the weird names. He has like 22,000 followers. Remember this guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, he has 22,000 followers. Well, you can clearly like, see why. It's a stellar question. And it's like, uh, we're not having a go, um, but you, you should, we, we shouldn't have to tell you this, but you're not welcome here. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Like I'm we're saying, more. We don't want. No, no. no I'm saying. I'm saying share the pod. Kind of we're saying right. share the pod. We don't want successful no, people we who do. have got a certain amount of fault. We no, want. We do. We want runts who sit in their basement. We, we want successful playing people. Video games. I'm saying that if you've like, got if you've got an audience already bigger than ours, then share the love and share the podcast and spread the beach because you're one of the only people of the you know, the swine who listens to the show who actually has an own audience. So yeah, which spread, is, yeah. spread well, the love. Sure. You maybe maybe do both. Share uh, it and then stop listening. Uh, okay. Uh, we have another question from another um, frequent messenger, Stefano Hayworth. Uh, okay, I've got a bone to pick with Stefano Hayworth before we even start. Why on. do you say the boys on every single podcast? It's a nice thing. Is it? Yeah. Why are you being like this? Because it's not. You're so childish. Is it, is it to, nice? It is nice. Okay, I thought it was nice the first time. It is nice. The second time? About? No, because it's like when you see your friends again, you're like the boys. That's like a nice thing. That's what those implying. Okay, it's I like, th- the boys. They're, you know. Because I think after the sixth time, I started to read it as sarcastic. No, he's a big fan. It would depend on the po- It would depend okay, on the question. Let's see what the I might. Are. I might take it back. Yeah. Yo, what's the first thing you're going to do when hyperinflation hits the UK? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to think of this now. I think it's the voice combined with the the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds like he's doing his laundry or something whilst doing that. <laughs> it really, it was like he was hanging up a shirt and then. Well, what do you? Ex- what question? How are we meant to answer that? Well, I'll actually I'll <laughs> go and click it. Right? Oh, because Andrew Cohen has actually been watching an entire day of the analysis yeah, of the UK actually, budget. You look very smug when I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I'll get, I'll get down to your level. <laughs> oh, that was an accident. I thought you meant to go up. That's what you were no, 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 I was going down because okay. I just want to speak to the sure, you, the sure, common man. Sure. Um, hyperinflation. There's actually two. So, uh, it, we'll, get, we'll get some economics chat going. We're, we're an informative podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, hyperinflation, there is a debate as to whether it's possible after COVID because of many factors. But it's, it's a debate between whether there'll be hyperinflation or deflation. Um, you're, yeah. No, I understand. Okay, yeah. So I'm... Yeah. Um, it's hyperinflation is extremely unlikely. It's almost definitely not going to happen. No. Um, but That's, we're talking it, Zimbabwe. If it we're were talking. to happen, oh, speaking of hyperinflation, sorry, you carry on. If it were to happen, um, I think what I'd do is I'd I'd have predicted the trends before it did, and what I'd do is I'd buy up a massive stocks of bread, um, because what happens well, if we take Weimar Germany as any case study. Yeah. Bread became the most valuable asset in the economy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is stock up on loads of Hovis. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll just say bread here. Mm. And then if it's costing, let's say in hyperinflation, we'll say it's like, I don't know, a grand for a loaf of yeah. bread. We'll make it like 900, 9,000. 9, yeah. No, 
999. Yeah. 990, uh, 995 pounds for okay. loaf of bread. I then sell those loaves of bread in an incredible profit. Sure. Um, and then I just stockpile all that money um, yeah. and then become a hermit. Yeah. Well, I feel because of the, the select things that are on history syllabus, one of the w- weird ones, the ones that is weirdly everyone seems to know about is hyperinflation in yeah. my ju- Germany. Yeah. So I do think we will have a generation strangely well equipped for the concept of hyperinflation, which yeah, is yeah. quite a fairly complex one if you actually think about it. Um, yeah. But uh, one of the other famous places of hyperinflation was Zimbabwe, which I went to three years ago. And here is a $20 billion note 20 billion. From, from Zimbabwe. No shit. Look at and that. that's one of the cheaper notes because there's Three, there's 20 like a, billion. There's like a three trillion. One, two, bill. three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, nice. eight, nine, ten zeros. And Alicia says twenty billion dollars, <laughs> and then it's got some rocks next to it. But you know, you know it's, it's funny seeing the images because you know that was yeah. printed in a time of extreme distress. Extreme. Yeah. That's not. It's not a good sign. Um, and they, yeah, they were selling it on the street uh, to tourists for like, yeah, for like three quid. Uh, twenty billion dollars because it's oh, this yeah, is that's... basically worthless because the current they now use yeah. dollars there. Um, but there's the famous thing about having a, a, a basket full of money and they throw yeah, the money yeah. out and stuff like Burn that. Burn the money for heat. Yeah. But we could, do we want to talk about the budget briefly? Is there yeah, any actually, interest, let's do it. Yeah, any that's, interest that, in it? That is inter- you seem like you have something to say. So well, on you. moderately, because it wasn't actually a moderately, it, it was a very unimpressive budget today um, based on what we were expecting because it was everything we were expecting. Okay. Does that make sense? Usually, yeah. the fun the fun thing about a budget is there's usually they they kind of pull out a, a magic a rabbit out the hat at the end. It's like, well, like so a, much a stuff. Pizzazz. Yeah, so much. It's like and we'll give free meals to children who are between four and five and have freckles. Yeah. Woo! Yes. But this time, because you know, because everything gets leaked beforehand, but now everything just got leaked. Okay. Purposefully. So no, sure. Because I think there there was no razzle dazzle. Okay. But corporation tax increasing. Yeah, which was it's an issue, but like really. And how now so, there was, I saw someone tweet that it's interesting that Sunak's more Corbynite than Keir Starmer at the moment. Yeah, well he's not. Ah, oh. go on then. Because business tax, it was increasing. It was something like seventy percent of the businesses won't be affected by it. It will be the bigger businesses, which yeah. is a good thing. But it's like offset by the certain amount of profit that you get. Yeah. So and it's it isn't definitely going to happen. But that was a big move for like a Tory government to actually increase business tax. That's good. It yeah. was, but. It's all in the veil of the pandemic, basically. Okay. But two th- I guess one of the things, if we're talking about our roadmap out of this in terms of building a new future, as we were talking about at the start, the green... Without Bradley Walsh. Without green Bradley Walsh. Without Bradley as Walsh. we said, the key problems that we want to come out with is stop, that's what she said, jokes, Bradley Walsh gone, climate change... Systemic racism. And systemic racism. <laughs> Rishi, R- Rishi Sunak failed at climate change today. Because, well, there was just like, it's, it was one of the most unambitious things because it could have been like, right, this is where we're building up from zero. Let's actually kind of build some sort of economy that works on a carbon neutral basis. Sure. And put in policies Makes to sense. both incentivize yeah. uh, green green businesses. Tax cuts for things and stuff like et cetera, that. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And de-incentivize yeah. non-green things. Yeah. Um, Fisheries, but it was it was pittance. Tariffs. It was pittance. Oh, was it? Literally, it was like one of the most unambitious things, uh, budgets in the in the world I've ever seen of that. Because it's now like, now with budgets, it is a kind of, it is part and parcel of it happening. So you have to put in like a green policy because now that climate change is on the agenda. But this could have been the moment where that happened. This could have been the start to let's do that. Yeah. Let's kind of start to actually think about the shaping of the economy rather than the running of it. And we didn't. That's what's terrifying. This is what, this is, this is I guess, what the for me is that I'm not super really anxious about Brexit in itself anymore or COVID in itself or Trump in itself. I'm more anxious that now the people in charge, Biden, uh, yeah. the Tories, the yeah. people who are choosing what this new world we make are, yeah, yeah, yeah. are trying to remake an old remake world that doesn't exist. One. Exactly. You know, that's what the, the yeah. exciting thing about when we had that little moment where it could have been Corbyn and Brexit. It's like we got Ooh, like yeah. a, a, a way that you slope. can actually build something new. Yeah, and like, yeah. Um, but now it's just kind of, and that's what the whole point, I guess the overall point of that budget was, is the fact that it's business as usual. Yeah. And I, that's a ridiculous way to but approach there are, this. Because that's the thing, because it's extraordinary time. So there are extraordinary measures for a Tory government, yeah. i.e. increasing in, uh, corporation tax. Yeah. But one of the interesting things, and I don't know if this is interesting yeah. else, but it was like, so there's no tax increases because they don't want to increase any of the burden of uh, like normal people or whatever. There's no income tax increases. Yeah. But there's income tax. So there's a freeze on personal 
personal income tax thresholds. Mm -hmm. So what? So a tax threshold is basically if you pay, if you earn, I don't know, something like twenty thousand, eighteen thousand yeah. pounds or something. Yeah. Then you start to get taxed on that income. Yeah. That goes up every year because inflation goes up every year. So if I, if it's because it's about, it's around eighteen thousand, whatever, twelve thousand, whatever it is now because it allow it's tax free because it costs a certain amount just to live okay. in the UK. Yeah. So then naturally that goes up every year as the salaries go up every year. Cost of living so goes up. exactly. Yeah. So then that goes up in line with inflation. Yeah. So the freeze on it is a little cheeky thing that they've done. They because by saying what they've actually done is increased taxes in a low key way yeah. on the people at the bottom of society because they've frozen income tax uh, the personal threshold yeah. for income tax. That means inflation and the cost of living are going up, but people are still being taxed on that 12,000 rather than moving up to 13,000. So they're still gaining more in the tax revenue than they would be. And that's what it's called like a stealth tax. Uh, so it is the definition of like a political move yeah. of actually getting more tax revenue without pissing anyone off. And the pound's and value must be going down anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. That's the problem, exactly. Which is a really like, it was a really shady thing. Sure. Yeah, I, I guess that's. Um I guess the the big fear I have, um, as Adam Curtis raised in his recent documentary, is that we have sort of three paths, and the one path that he brought up as well that I think is the scariest is that <clears throat> we retreat back into what we find comfortable. Yeah. I this is why I was so disappointed that Biden sex got tourism. It. sex tourism. Just go back to those home comforts, inflatable beds, <laughs> <laughs> bouncy castles, bouncy castles, <laughs> snakes and bottles that pop out at you. You're ignoring reality. Oh, get I off, know. get out. If you try and turn my dust. playable away from me, I am not, I'm not going to react well. But um, yeah, so Biden is the bouncy castle of politics. Of politics. Yeah, it's just these people who are just not dealing with reality and who are like, they want to go back to Obama and we, it was just a completely different world. Yeah. Um, and that's what's scary is that, you know, if there's another election cycle and maybe they just don't want any change, well, they'll probably get, Starmer will come in and it'll just be the same. And if yeah. it's like Starmer and Biden and it's like, God, we've had, we've been through all this shit and now we want something that's just not, just not gonna work yeah um, so in answer to your question um i would buy up all the bread in hyperinflation yeah but i think with the hyperinflation thing i think what what, <coughs> what my tax would be is i think um start acting like it's the apocalypse as soon as it has any signs of beginning to be the apocalypse so i'm saying as soon as the if it inflates starts inflating quite fast yeah immediately uh, do like you're you're wearing a, a loin a loin cloth. Yeah. You're you're Chassis you're belt. fighting people in Tesco's. You're, you're you start a religious cult. You board up the windows, but you do that like they're like as soon as as soon as it uh, yeah. starts looking like that. I just had a dream. I I, I didn't okay. just have a dream. Yeah. Um, I remember just remembered I had a dream where I un, I was running a cult and I understood why cults worked. Why? It it's gone. Uh, nightmare. Um, so during the well, I mean, show, which is quite a lot of fun, what? is that uh, a listener of the show who's actually been there since the first episode, Arch Brooks Watson, uh, Archie Brooks Watson, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, he uh, said, "This is this still open?" He said that about ten minutes ago. I said, "Yet yeah, we're on our air oh, after shit. way, so this is literally just oh, coming." This is live as live as so heck. So it uh, could be incredibly racist. You haven't I, heard if this. I know. I haven't heard. Okay, this. we might have to bleep some words out. So there's that typical dilemma. Would you take part in a life where everything seemed to go your way, you had the most pleasurable, meaningful existence, and then at the end of your life, you woke up and you were attached to a machine and it had all been fake? Because when I've heard that thought experiment, what I thought is... Even if I was just living my life as I've been doing now, and then at the end I woke up tied to a machine, and then that I realised true reality, that would still be a cool fucking ending. It'd be a great, it'd be a great thing to tag on the end. I don't see any downside with that. So, uh, what's yeah. your position on that for experiment? What I liked about that is that he answered his own question. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's in, that's an interesting question. I mean, I'm well, almost, I'm well, almost, the basically is would you would you prefer, would you would you choose a life an artificial life full of happiness or a real life not full of happiness? Well, the, the problem, yes, yeah, there's almost this question. The problem is, is this is like my main 
anxiety and the question that sort of is, is within the realms of you're my, getting a bit sweaty my yeah, main, I can see yeah. you well, do uh, you remember I, I wrote the, the play I wrote at school was about this same question yeah. Rex was basically about this um, which Andrew had a starring role I had in. a starring role and the role um, <laughs> my improv line uh, was the one that always got the biggest laugh every night really and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, do, you, do you remember what it was? What was it? It was, I, was, I had a newspaper. Yeah. I was with a Cornish accent. Which yeah. Don't ask me to reproduce. Because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't good enough at the time anyway. Uh, but it was... It's a lot of strange like, accents. Oh, we got a lively one here today. Yeah, yeah. Brought the house down Brought every the time. House uh, every down. time, Horatio would be sitting in the front row and i just look to him yeah. as I was on stage <laughs> basking in what was meant to be his glory that it turned into the Andrew show. <laughs> Much um, the same as this podcast. But yeah, so it, it, it was dealing with similar things. I, I recently watched The Matrix, which is basically what the, that whole yeah, thing yeah. is. Uh, uh, Simulation and Simulacrum by John Baldriard is what The uh, Matrix is based off, which is the idea of hyper-reality. And that's probably my biggest political anxieties come from... Um, the Matrix. The, the, the <laughs> Matrix. Um, kind of, kind yeah. of reads the performances. But it's more the way that... And this is... Literally, this is where my fury against wokeness comes from more than anything, is um, I get terrified. I get really, like, irrationally anxious when we stop pretending reality exists. Do you know what I mean? When we, when we stop pretending reality exists. When we, like, talk about things and it's so clearly but not the only, case. Yeah, but it's a it's a theoretical point. It's more of a, it's a logic experiment rather than a reality. No, this is what, I, this is what I'm leading into, is that, okay. like, the, the things that I, what's so um, bewildering about the current state of events because of social media, because of what's happened recently, uh, is that... Because you spend too much time about it. Because... <laughs> Because um, you, uh, it's that feeling that you don't, uh, things seem hyper real. And yeah. it's like that sort of weird um, dissemination between uh, what's real and what's hyper real. And that really makes me anxious. And I, I just want to move to a place where I understand what you're saying about waking up with things. And I think we need to start just striving for reality. And I do think that um, there's that argument of that ultimate pleasure existence. But I do... But do Honestly you not believe, think you're taking even the question a bit too literally? No, no, even conceptually, even if you could have the perfect life, yeah. even conceptually. Even conceptually, you're not ready to answer the question because it scares you too much. No, I, mean, I am. I think yeah. I'd, choose, um, I would, I'd say that's a bad thing. Yeah, I'd but say that's, reality but that's, above all else. The, yeah, okay, you say reality above all else. Above all else. It, be it bad or good, reality yeah. above all else. You choose reality above Even if else. it was a perfect thing without glitches or anything but like that. But then how can you be absolutely sure that we're living in what you deem as reality in this current... Well, that, that is a good question. But I, so even on this question, there's that sort of Elon Musk thing that kind of pisses me off, which is what people computer think. Computer simulation. Yeah, which pisses me off because I, like, I have a lot of interest in this topic, but it's when Elon Musk goes like, well, you know, uh, like f 50 years ago, uh, video games was as simple as Pong. And now we South have... Uh, and now it's not bad, actually. Yeah, um, no, but he's kind of, he's like flattened his South African, so it's like he kind of like, uh, but he, kind of, he doesn't have like the South African... Like, no, 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 no. It's like, like a kind of like, no, because now it's Kermit. Now it's... Um, <laughs> yes, Kermit. Yeah. Um, and he speaks like uh, um, we used to have Pong and now we have virtual reality so um, if you think if that would took 50 years what about a million years uh, we could easily now, um, uh, reproduce realities no, and but, uh, that was a good must. but so the, the, the idea that um, Elon Musk is saying is that it's most likely we're living a simulation because 50 years ago we made Pong now we have VR that only took 50 <laughs> years in a million years we could create a thing I disagree with that because I, it implies that there's absolutely no limit to human literally no limit to human achievement which i do think there is and i do yeah. think um simulating endless realities um that feel completely is the argument that because we've gained similar technology in our current life in a, sm in a that small someone else must have done it yeah but that's where There's i so that's jumps. what i prob yeah. that the problem that i have with that with, yeah. which is kind of goes hand yeah. in hand with theories of extraterrestrial life forms yeah is that what you presume by that is that every society on a completely different planet, on a completely different, um, in a completely different universe, in a different strategy or yeah. something, is going to go through the same developments of society that we've gone through. No, they're saying it might be us. Well, us that we've then created our own. Yeah, which I, once again is big jumps, but I think that's more Elon Musk doing his sort of like Tony Stark posturing as being like a Oh kind yeah, of, he needs to and, see but like what, a but this is what I also maverick. think because... I think about this topic a lot. I do think that it's those sort of bold, ridiculous, um, almost conspiracy theories that mean that you don't actually deal with the real problems with simulation theory. So it's like the idea that, 
oh, well, maybe we're just living in simulation. That No one actually believes that. I don't think anyone actually believes that. So it means that you kind of stop thinking about the issue. I think it's a much deeper reality. The problem is, is that we live in half simulation. That's what's terrifying. Why? Because What's, what's the half aspect? The half simulation is because um, we live in a hyper reality where sort of image precedes reality. So often yeah. you see an image of something before you see the real thing. And that creates a disconnect psychologically. An image of what? Are you talking about language? I'm saying news, media, social media, a lot of things that you see. But that's a lot more of a basic understanding of the simulation than is being brought up in this kind of question. No, I, I'm saying that, that the question that Elon Musk is dealing with is a diversion from the actual problem, which is yeah. the half uh, simulation. Okay, okay. So the you're half saying we should reality we live, live yeah. on. And this is what Baudrillard was talking They're not different questions in a way. I, I, get, I don't think uh, they are. I don't think they are because I think um, I think it's more trying to refocus the the anxieties yeah. onto what where they come from. Yeah. Because yeah, the, yeah. the, the 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 reason why he raised that and what what reason why we feel that's because it comes from the, uh, an anxiety that we are living in simulation. And I was thinking about this. What's weird is like. Um, is with, it all from that, or is it also based on the technology that we've created? The fact that we do have abilities to create simulations. That's all linked. That's all linked. Yeah, that's all linked. Yeah, exactly. That's all part of it. But yeah, uh, yeah. The, 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 the the technology to create simulations is once again only a small part of yeah. why we feel like we're living in a simulation. Yeah. So, for example, one of the weird things that I feel is creating this weird um, sort of uh, sort of hyper reality is that I saw BB first in the background of an Instagram story. Yeah. And that weird thing of seeing a yeah. really crisp image into a life through Instagram stories. Is and like just way, in general, that's just one way, example. Baby, definitely keep it guy that describes it as crisp. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then that preceding actual reality, and then he's looking at Instagram stories in general or yeah. any sort of social media where you're having all these images in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Often, you know what we talked about, those sort of fever dreams yeah. you have in the morning when you wake up and yeah, you're half yeah. asleep. Sometimes- Best part of reality. The, the, when that's like a dreamlike state when you're in that half space. Sometimes the images that you can see on social media, on TV, they blend in with what actually happens. And that is what I believe is hyper reality. And that is what's terrifying is that we've rendered- um, reality so realistically that it is becoming indistinguishable. So what I, right, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, and, and that's what the real fear is. It's not that we're, aliens have put a yeah, simulation, it's that we're living in a part, half simulation. I would agree with that, but I'd also say that part of that, there is, there's a theory, which we're going into postmodernism. But, yeah. And there's, there is that theory that that is kind of an inherent part of the human condition because it isn't just about the virtual images we're seeing over the internet or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. It's just about about how we look at things that are in our perceived reality. Yeah. So postmodernism language kind of theory. If yeah. I go and look at a tree, yeah. the tree is the signified, yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe. I, I call it a tree, which is mm -hmm. the signifier. And then what I understand when I look at that tree, that object, and I call it a tree, is very different because of the processes it's gone through my brain compared to what you look at when you see the image of a tree and what you call but a where tree. This is different and what that happens, then what happens then is we have this interconnected network of meaning and minds that have all kind of processed information yeah. in a slightly, very slightly, but important different ways that then means that we don't have a shared understanding of reality or meaning of things. Yeah, but then, so that's semiotics. And I think that um, that is talking about a broader thing of just how we... Um, uh, distinguish meaning but yeah, the but problem is now with yeah. the change of technology is that this is a fairly recent phenomenon with the invention yeah yeah of and I, I agree it has made the problem the current set is almost schizophrenic just existence because the signified and signified that relationship yeah, exactly has been destroyed they're even more pulled apart before yeah you know as many problems as well you even didn't have that destroyed we, relationship we, you can kind of accept that when we're both looking at the same tree they're going to have different meanings but now the fact that the tree has become a massive network of virtual trees yeah completely but it's also like a tree it's, it's almost um we're reaching a state where it's almost like uh the signified is just getting torn away yeah, yeah, from yeah. what it's and that like that is what is terrifying yeah it's that half simulation simulation yeah okay yeah no, i mean I, I could go on this for hours but that to answer that question uh it is something i think about a lot um let's go on to another question i'll do a we can do a proper episode on hyper reality because I do yeah, think okay. it's the we'll, most, we'll hold off on um, it. Yeah, I agree. One of the most interesting topics at the moment 
here we go. Hello, hello, love um, your podcast. Thank you. I was just wondering, I have to say this really quietly so my mum doesn't hear me next door. Is there such a thing as post night clarity for guys? Like, do you just find the person you've just had sex with unattractive after you finished? Like, is that true? Because I've just been seeing a lot of stuff about it and it's actually just quite a devastating reality, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, need more info. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's her name? Cordelia. Cordelia's mum. Cordelia's asking sex questions on a podcast. We've rused her. We got her. Uh, thank you very much for messaging in, thank Cordelia. Um, and also, uh, next time I ask, please feel free to uh, message in questions. I know that sending a voice yeah. note can feel intimate. I have but, questions. Well, actually, I've just made um, a good one. Um, right, wait, what so, was that? So that was is there's a there's a thing going around where you feel less attra- less attracted to the You know what post nut clarity is. The post, inter- oh, po- I didn't hear that word. Post nut clarity. Post nut clarity. You know the concept of it. What well, the reality? With of it. right with sex. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. With that, it's like there is going to be. I think particularly in men mm-hmm. because of our biology in terms of where you know we want to. Ad- there is a bi- biological component of men that want to impregnate as many women as possible, mm-hmm. based on the fact that of genetic diversity to have the most chance of your kids being born mm-hmm. and your kids to be successful. And, then and women survive. on the flip side want to hold on because they want to have a father who might look after the child. So they yeah. have a natural urge for whoever. That's why women with one night stands, even if they don't actually like the guy, if you have sex with them, yeah. they feel this strange exactly. bond because it's like nature saying yeah. the person's impregnated you've got to hold on to them to exactly. protect your and you know. obviously in these these biological biological urges no longer play like no longer are relevant in our survival in modern times sure but with the po- po- what's it called post-coital post <laughs> post post <laughs> nut post nut clarity post nut clarity it's nothing to do with the level of attraction no to it what it is it's, a, it's almost like an absolute plummet of your sex drive Mm -hmm. it's like sex becomes the the last thing you want to do Mm -hmm. so it's not that it's nothing to do with the attractiveness you're still equally as attracted to the woman 100 percent, but not in the sexual way that you were before so it's like you know of of course there's times when you're going to be with with a girl or a guy Mm -hmm. where if you're in a if you're in a long relationship you're not going to want to fuck them every single minute of the day there's going to be times when you're feeling more sexually charged or less sexually charged so what that is is a massive drop in that sexual charge because you've just done the point of sex so then it's not like you're seeing them in that aggressively sexual way yeah i i mean what what i'd say which i think more she's trying to i i think that they obviously it's more after it you and this is something i kind of feel is an important advice uh for women as well it's like after it i guess it's, it's not it's yeah it's not a personal thing but the idea, you kind of need to be left alone. And that's the main thing, I think. I don't think you need to be left alone. I think after, post, uh, after ejaculation... What do you do? Do you just walk off into another no, room? No, I think this in, is something I believe, corner. is that I think after ejaculation, all I want is to be left alone for like five minutes. I need at least that. I really want... I don't want any... I, I can't deal with any of that. Just okay. genuinely, I need five minutes. Um, and that's something that I think... Uh, is a tip for women is in general okay. just let a man just be alone because you're having a moment where you're you have a but you can understand how deep, for women you can understand how medical. for women that's not very nice yes but also and it's I, the state of it's the state of the things you deal with you can deal with five minutes i think that might be more personal to you i think that's a very common I mean, thing maybe. hence the term post nut clarity because once you've ejaculated you are now going through a deep melancholy as you race through yeah uh, there's a melancholy feeling there's a deep it's uh an almost sadness comes over you and it dissipates, <laughs> but you have this five minute dark cloud and you'll get out of it quicker and healthier if you're just left alone. So it may may feel cold, like you're being used, but just get through that five minutes, let them have some space. Yeah, I guess so. If that's, what, is they, my if that's what they would want. Yeah, I, I think guess it's give good those to, signifiers. Yeah, good to communicate with that. I yeah. mean, as I say, for me, it's just of a meet it's almost like a recharging thing yeah it's like life is just going up between life is just a series of having come and then recharging so you can come next <laughs> but i'm a sex addict so <laughs> don't listen to anything i say to be honest um, uh, but yeah no for me it's like i don't i get because i think that the important point you added was a melancholic thing 100 yeah. percent. i don't get i don't feel shame when i like yeah that's know, the problem yeah, I know. It's uh, that, the lack I of guess shame. That is that where sex addiction he'll comes wake from. up and he'll be in the middle of a shopping mall with his pants down and he won't feel that burning I don't red. Feel shame. <laughs> because what's there to be ashamed of? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I'm a progressive. Yeah. But 
We're, yeah, no, I think, yeah, Melan melancholy is a thing that, yeah, it, obviously that, that washes over. I think it's a good point. If if the person's saying, I think, again, communication with that, the person's saying they feel like they need five minutes to recuperate and that it, kind of go through the deep mysteries of the universe, which is what it can seem like after you've um, nutted, busted your nut. <laughs> busted one's then nuts. Then sure, then <laughs> sure. Um, but it's nothing to do with being, it's not, I think. Yeah, so don't take it's it nothing personally, to do with being even though attracted. it's understandable why you would. Yeah. Because it's not, because what she's saying is quite a devastating thing. It's, I think that yeah, the, 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 ins the insecurity is the feeling that um, they don't find so me attractive anymore. It's not you, that, no, it's but what more you want, sexism what on you, the mind. So when you want to spend your time by yourself, would you, what, what, how can you envision that? We've just had sex. Yeah. I've then, I've then gone for a hug. What do you need from me? You are. You don't want me to go for the hug. I'm gonna withdraw from the hug. Withdraw from the hug, give and then just minutes. give you five minutes on the bed. Yeah. Do you not want to go in a different room? No, you're no, good no. You're good in the same room. Deep. I'm good in the same room. You're good in the just same room. Just don't bug me. Let just me have don't the... hug you. Not even a hug. I'd prefer to. But know. also, is it not part of you to get over that and just accept a hug? Because no. it's as no, because you're maybe you're thinking selfishly. Because I'm not thinking selfishly. Because I think the drive, no, the drive for is... the woman, for the woman, they're thinking the opposite of that. That they want to get closer to you. Yeah, so but why I think should the drive they stop hugging? Why should why should they? say that they shouldn't you know shouldn't encroach in your space rather than you say you find the, the kind of interim between the two because the drive to be away from the space is far more aggressive in the man than it is to be close to them with the woman far more i don't know how you can know that you can't but i think it's a fair, and that's my first because i think agree. i felt that a bit but then partly it's like it's not i guess it would be better for a bit but you can just have a hug do you know what i mean it's like because also it feels right to after it feels wrong to want to spend time by yourself after you've had sex. Not by yourself, just like give some yeah, a bit yeah, no, of space. Not, yeah, no, I'm not saying different room, but it feels yeah. like, it feels to me right that you should at least hug after. You will. For me. Yeah, but after just five, not straight yeah, but, after. If it's straight after still feels, then it makes it feel like you've done something more dirty or shameful. That's what I, and I can get that stance completely. And I get where okay. it comes from. Maybe, maybe, I, okay, maybe. Um, a little, but I'm saying meet in the middle. I'm saying get, like, it should be... I mean, for me, it would be like just kind of not really. I don't know. I guess you can talk, but I'd hug straight after. I mean, I just need thirty seconds to go clean the cum off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Uh, let's go to another question. Um, this is from a big fan, Sam Hawkins. Um, right, he sent two voice notes. I might play them both back to back. Here's one. Question for the Boys Gone Wild podcast. Where did you and Andrew meet? Was it at a village people convention by any chance? No, it was at school. It was at school. Hi, guys. I just want to find out how you like your eggs. Do you like them fried, poached, scrambled, or my personal favourite, poached? Uh, I I like them at the moment. I like them scrambled, but I, I I go through a big a dial of liking eggs in different orders. What about you? You've accidentally come into an interesting question here, here Sam. Um, I don't like eggs. That's yeah. I guess that's interesting. No, go on. How is it not interesting? <laughs> How many people do you know that don't like eggs? No, you're not that many. One. Yeah, me. Yeah. Um, I have been adverse to mashed potato and eggs, particularly from this. Mashed start. potato, I completely agree with you. That stuff yeah, is that's heinous. Fair, yeah. Um, but eggs, yeah, eggs. I've I try an egg every year on the 24th of March. Every year, I will try an egg, mm -hmm. um, whether it be fried, poached, scrambled, however you like Just it. Just give it a go. I'll give it a go, and it's the taste. I'm a texture guy. There's a problem with the texture for a lot of things, but it's the taste of it. Really, it's the taste, and it is fucking annoying because I'm a big, mm, yeah, I'm yeah. a big fry up man. And you, could, you, and it feels like you're left out of a lot of fun because there's a lot of fun. Well, when you guys have eggs. your egg parties. <laughs> But the, it, egg egg is like the ultimate uh, morning food anyway. Yeah. It's like the foundation of in every nearly all cultures across the world. Eggs yeah. are like a huge part of you yeah. know. It's, it's like being left out of a of a tradition or a, it's true, or yeah. a culture. Um, and I think we got. What do you want to do? One more? Yeah, we'll do our. Uh, this is from Niamh. Niamh. Oh, wait, actually. Do you mean Neve? Neve. Oh, it's, it's half played, so don't know. Okay. Hi. If you could have dinner with five people who were dead or alive, who would it be and why? Like, what sort of interactions do you want to see from the people around the table? Um, not sure if it's exactly the questions you're looking for. Um, just thought maybe maybe an interesting one to answer. Big fan of the podcast. 
Thank you very much, Neve. Is it possible to clone your dad five times? <laughs> <laughs> and then what I'd want from this is I want funny dad. I'd want emotional dad. I want supportive dad. I'd, I'd want um, jovial, but uh, kind of kick you under the shins a bit. So dad, uh, to give you that. And then just, just, one, just one for fun. <laughs> Or just one, just a just one mystery to, box, mystery. maybe. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Just so he's there. That's probably the best answer I've heard to that question ever. Yeah. Uh, I think is Neve. So you said Neve's a Neve. Patreon. Uh, I believe Neve is a Patreon. Oh well, thanks. For Thank you, to Patreon, and everyone else. Everyone please, else do. please do subscribe to the Patreon. Um, and you do have privileges to ask questions whenever. Um, yeah. No, I think five versions of your dad yeah. would be great. I think I'd have the same thing with your dad. My dad, yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad we both... You can come. Yeah. Well, I'd one. have... No, I'd have four Bill Kerwins and <laughs> I'd have... <laughs> I'd have four uh, Bill Kerwins and um, then I'd have uh, four Bill Kerwins and Gandhi, I think. And Gandhi. Yeah. Just to mix it up, I guess like <laughs> a lot of... If you've got four Bill Kerwins around the table... <laughs> You need, the, you, need, you need the level-headed guy. You know, you need the you one. You need someone to be like, whoa, 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 Bill, Bill. Hey, hey, sh- hey guys, 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 guys. Whoa, Bill, bear Bill. Bear in mind, these all, all of mine are genetically altered for dads that don't exist. <laughs> yeah. And it's more just so I can have five lots of conversation <laughs> yeah. rather than zero. Would well, you think Gandhi might get in the way of that? I think he would. Um, <laughs> bring it back so I would absolutely ship. forfeit my right to have a fascinating historical and political <laughs> conversation with so. one of the most inspiring and controversial <laughs> figures in human history just so I could have another dad. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think I get more from it. Um, and I think what I'm trying to do is make up for several years of um, a slight lack of conversation. Great. That's a great answer. Um, that We come to the end of our questions. Let me just have one little check to make sure. I'm going to um, go for a wee. Well, no, because we're coming to the end now. So oh, so I'll save it. Say. I'll park it. Uh, do you have anything else to say? No. I think that's all good. Yeah. Uh, subscribe, to thanks, the Patreon. subscribe to the Patreon. Thanks for answering questions. We might do that again. We might do that once every four we'll episodes. Do, maybe yeah. Like or we could, do, we could do a couple or like one in a show, maybe. Make but it a little we segment. We yeah, we don't want people sending in questions. All the time. And then us rejecting, well, did you rejecting like, 90% how about, of them. Did you like the question episode? Yeah. Would you like to see more of the question episode? Or we could have people send them in um, just generally. Yeah. And then we can, we, we'll just pick them up. That's what I said. If you, think, if you think of one, chuck yeah, it in. Please chuck it in. And then, yeah, or so if you, you think of a great one, uh, send in a voice note and we'll see if we want to... Or if you like it. this, then we could do this once every five or once something. Once every five, do a question special. Yeah. That's been the question special. We've been Boys Gone Wild. See you next week.